Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about Git clone and yet another way to speed it up. Uh, I actually showed uh, a few techniques in a previous video. I'll try and remember to link that below. Otherwise, search the channel. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so a common thing that I find myself doing, and admittedly, it's probably not the best practice, is taking a repo that I've already cloned once and recloning it to get a fresher version. Now, yes, I could just pull, um, but sometimes it's easier to just start from a blank slate. It shouldn't need to in, in the modern day, like Git's gotten a lot more robust, but sometimes you need to. Uh, in particular, I do this a lot with dead snakes because a lot of my scripts assume a blank repository state and I don't know, I haven't tested all of the edge cases of them, so I'm not always so confident that they work. Um, but unfortunately, these repos are giant and they take forever to clone. Uh, especially these nightly ones because they contain the entire history of CPython itself back, you know, all the way back till 1991 or whatever. Uh, and so cloning these from scratch takes a very, very long time. Now, fortunately, there's an option inside Git called dash dash reference, uh, git clone dash dash reference, which allows you to reference a Git repository that's already on disk and saves a bunch of network IO when downloading these. So if I were to do reference workspace dead snakes, Python 3.13 dash nightly. And then of course, oh, you can't see it, but I guess I can do this. Git github.com dead snakes slash Python 3.13 dash nightly. I put a backslash that you can't see because it's behind my face. But um, if I were to just do git clone this, it's gonna take so long that you would click away from the video. Um, but with this, we're using a reference copy to the, the version we've already cloned. And you can see that this completes very, very quickly. Uh, it was able to, I mean, it only needed to download 400-ish objects, which is not, not very many compared to the like tens of thousands that it would need for a full clone. Uh, now this is great and uh, I really like this feature, but it has one main downside. And that is if, uh, you know, I've cloned this repo now and if I go into it, you know, get status, whatever, it's, it's a repo and it works. Uh, if I were to go back and clean up my old clone of this or even move it, so let's see, uh, move workspace, dead snakes, Python 3.3 dash nightly, even just moving the old repo uh, will break this other reference clone that I've made. Uh, you know, get status and you get the, fatal bad object head and you we, I've broken this repo uh, and the reason that I've broken this repo is the way that reference clone works is it puts a special little uh, I can't remember if it's a sim link it can't be a sim link because it's got to work on windows right uh, there's a special little file yeah okay so there's a special little file inside the git directory called alternates which tells git where to find uh, the original objects and you'll notice this is a full path to a different repo and so if this repo moves it can't find its objects anymore now, fortunately, there is a great solution to this problem, and I wish, <laughs> I've known about reference for an extremely long time, and I, I've known about this pitfall. Uh, I wish I knew the fix for this a long time ago, too, because I have seen this message more times than I care to know. Um, but it turns out there's a really great way to avoid this problem, and it's called dissociate. Um, no, not to have an existential crisis or uh, those sorts of things, but... Um, I am uh, taking the same command as before, git clone reference. All I have to do is add dissociate to this. And what git will do is it'll avoid the network IO by reusing the objects that I have locally. But then instead of setting up this alternates thing, it'll copy those objects over to the new repo. Now this does take a little bit longer than the original clone because you know copying everything on disk takes a while, um, but it saves on your network bandwidth and it's gonna give you a lot more peace of mind. And it's still pretty fast. Like this probably took, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. And um, yeah, the reference clone only took like three seconds, but uh, this is a huge improvement over the many number of minutes it might take for me to do an actual clone of this repository. Um, and of course, I wanna show that definitely doesn't break if I move this. So if I move nightly old to nightly old old, and I CD into Python 3.13 nightly, just ignore that I've cloned it inside of itself, whatever. Um, everything works. There's, you know, the, I, I, I didn't lose my head. And if we look at Git, 
objects. There's no alternates here, so um, we're not we're not in the same mode. Was it get objects alternates? What was it? Somewhere up here. Oh, I've gone too far. Get objects info alternates. Uh, there's no alternates file in here, so uh, it's not set up as a reference clone. Anyway, that's reference clones. How you can speed up a clone if you already have a somewhat recent copy on disk, uh, and how you can uh, <laughs> how you can avoid the moving repository problem. Um, yeah, and another annoying thing that happens with this, just a uh, slide aside, if you have a reference clone and you're referencing a branch and that branch gets deleted, you also have problems with losing objects. It's just one of the ways that Git can sort of fall apart internally uh, based on this really useful but double-edged sword option. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.